Independence Hall is one of the largest lecture rooms on campus at Ohio State, seating over 700 students. Its construction is meant to maximize seating space to accommodate the university's biggest classes and diverse population. An analysis of this frequently utilized building reveals the effectiveness of the university's dedication to accessibility. Pictured here is the more heavily trafficked east side of the brick building facing Neal, a flat sidewalk connecting the two entrances. A closer look at the south entrance shows a set of heavy double doors with handles. The door on the left has a small blue sticker in the corner indicating that the accessible entrance is to the right with an arrow. There are several handicapped parking spaces along Neal just outside the south entrance, not optimal placement considering the north entrance is marked the accessible one. Passing through the double doors, one enters a lobby area with more sets of doors, the ones on the left leading to the east hall and the only bathrooms in the facility. The hall is long and wide, spacious enough for two-way traffic. A small blue handicap icon in the top left corner of the hall is barely visible from the south end. Upon closer investigation, both bathroom doors have automatic door buttons, making for a physically accessible space. To get back to the south lobby, a student must face another set of heavy double doors with no automatic button. Beyond these, a lighter set of doors sits at the top of the stairs. The only other doors in the south corridor are spaced out over a series of unequal steps and platform spaces, as shown in the photograph with doors every few steps on the right and the steps continuing to the base of the building. The seating availability for any individuals unable to or wishing not to use the fold-down aisle chairs is very slim. Here one can see the designated handicap accommodations, two tables with pull-out chairs on the first floor level. In the foreground, a pylon with a blue symbol signifies the seating area is accessible. These designated seats are almost the furthest from the instructor, making slide reading difficult for any visually impaired individual utilizing the space. One can barely see the black podium or read the screen. The rows of seats are very narrow. With so many students in attendance, seats fill up quickly, and one would have to arrive early to navigate the aisles without obstacle. If one were to use the north accessible entrance, an easily reachable button would have to be pushed on the right, following with a second button inside. However, once the hall is entered, the student would still be confined to the limited accessibility options shown before. These few tables can only seat four students at max, and if the tables fill up as they so often do in crowded independence, one may have to utilize the accessible entrance on the west side, reachable via an outdoor ramp or stairs. This entrance has a flat approach to the narrow door. The automatic button stands a couple yards from the door, causing a time crunch from the moment the button is pressed to the moment the door closes again. Once inside, the individual faces the steps. To the left is a narrow accessible door with an automatic button that leads to the base of the lecture hall. The space next to the first row of chairs on the right can fit a wheelchair, but if occupied, the student would have to cross the entire row, drawing unwanted attention to the individual's needs for accommodation and singling this person out. The complicated sloping design of independence with the incompleteness of the university's gestures at accessibility shows Ohio State's ongoing struggle to retain historical architecture while adapting to best serve its as diverse population.